there. Welcome to our first out of two videos about chapter 12. Just very quickly, we're going to talk about regression and that linear regression, um, how we make sure that our information fits it. And then in the second one, I think we deal with transformations. So let's dive in very quickly. Again, technically chapter 12 is not tested. So this is just about um, practicing and feeling comfortable with concepts. And then we'll really focus on our chapter reviews as we continue on. So uh, continue, continue, continue. When a scatter plot shows a linear relationship between a quantitative explanatory variable X and a quantitative response variable Y, we can use the least squares line fitted to the data per predict Y for a given value of X. You know this from a previous chapter where we dealt with the least squares regression line and um, line of best fit and all of that. If the data are a random sample from a larger population, we need statistical inference to answer these following questions. Is there really a linear relationship between X and Y in the population? Or could the pattern we see in the scatter plot plausibly happen by chance? So that's a question we could ask. And finally, if the populate in the population, how much will the predicted value of Y change for every increase of one unit in X? What's the margin of error for this estimate? So as you increase further up, um, what's the predicted values of Y? How much do they change? And what's that margin of error? So below is a scatter plot of the duration and interval of time until the next eruption of the Old Faithful Geyser for all 222 recorded eruptions in a single month. The least squares regression line or the linear slope line that you see there for this population of data has been added to the graph and it is for the Y hat equals 33.97 plus 10.36 excuse me, sorry, um, and then they've written it in the true least squares regression format, the predicted var var interval, which is your y hat, is going to be equal to 33.97, your a, plus bx, so 10.36, and your x value is your duration in minutes. We call this the population regression line, or the true regression line, because it uses all of the observations in that month of recording. So suppose we take a single random sample of 20 eruptions from this population. Calculate the new least squares regression line or our y hat line for the sample data. How would the slope of the sample line or the estimated regression line relate to the slope of the population line? Good question. So the figure below shows the results of taking three different SRSs of 20 old faithful eruptions in that month. Each graph displays the selected point and the least squares regression line for that sample. What do you notice about these three samples? Uh, no, what do you notice about the slopes of these three samples? And remember, your slope is the value connected to the X. So the slope in sample A is 10.2, slope in sample B is 7.7, .7, and the slope in sample C is 9.5. So what do you notice about those values, especially in comparison back to the population where the slope was 10.36? Well, we notice that the slopes of the sample regression line, 10.2, 7.7, and 9.5, vary quite a bit from that original population of 10.36, right? 10.2 is close, 9.5 is sort of close, but 7.7, .7, where the heck did that come from? Well, confidence intervals and significant tests about the slope of the population regression line are based off of the sampling distribution of B, or your slope, the slope of the sample regression line. So we created this uh, sampling distribution here, and we can see that the distribution of our B values, our slope values, is roughly symmetric and unimodal, so it's pretty um symmetric on the left and the right hand side and unimodal means there's a single peak the center of the thousand b values is 10.35 this value is quite close to the original slope so basically what happens uh let me finish this up sorry the spread the standard deviation is 1.29 and later on we're going to see that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of e was actually 1.27 so it'll continue on so what do you notice about this information compared to the previous. Well, if we just took three simple random samples, we didn't quite get that information. But if we took a thousand of them, our slope now um, lies at 10.35, very close to the original population. So that's just a reminder about the difference between taking a simple random sample of our information versus the actual sampling distribution of the slope, where the, the information will actually start to model the population. 
So here is a formal definition snippet of sampling distribution of, sl of slope. And here we go back and we've got a formula that we're going to end up using, that standard deviation formula. And then we're also going to be able to relate our mean of the sampling distribution of B back to the population distribution um, B as well. So as long as we're dealing with approximately normal, we can follow those conditions. Uh, the conditions for regression inference, the regression model requires that each possible value of the explanatory variable X meets both. The mean value of the response variable mu Y falls on the population true regression line, and the value of the response variable Y follows a normal distribution with a common standard deviation. So again, more conditions. Okay, we have to follow our linear, not our linear line, but so um, suppose we have n observations of an explanatory variable x and a response variable y. Our goal is to study or predict the, vari the y for given x. So we need to have it follow these five parts, linear, independent, normal, equal, and random. Linear. So linear, the actual relationship between x and y is linear. You notice that you have a regression line. Independent, the observations are independent of each other. Um, and if you're sampling without replacement, check the 10% condition. Normal, for any fixed value of x, the response y uh, varies according to the normal distribution, or if you graph it yourself, you see a normal curve. Your equal standard deviations um, is the same for all values of x, and random, it comes from either a well-designed random sample or a randomized experiment. So how do we check conditions for, in for inference? We start by making a histogram, not a bar graph, a histogram or a normal probability plot of the residuals. And then we're also going to make a residual plot. So this chapter is talking about a lot of old prior knowledge. One of the main reasons why I wanted to talk about it still is because it's going to start to connect the dots between things that didn't make sense before. And we're starting to connect those dots now. So. Uh, examine the scatter plot to check the overall pattern. Okay, so this is just a pretty good how do I use my histogram or my normal probability plot to check my conditions are met. So I would take a snippet of this and just know that you're using these each time. So let's estimate some parameters, and I think we have an example to run through as well. When the conditions are met, we can do inference about the regression model, and here's that regression model. It models the y hat equals a plus bx, um, and the first step is to estimate the unknown parameters. You can read through to, 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 you can read that previous slide if you need to about conditions, and if we calculate the LSRL, the slope of b is an unbiased estimator of the population slope b. And the y-intercept is an unbiased estimate of the population y-intercept of alpha. So remember that the um, capital B, that beta value, and the uh, alpha symbol are, are you're talking about our populations. The remaining parameter is the standard deviation, which describes the variability of the response y about the population regression line. Lots of formal definitions. It'll make a lot more sense when we actually practice it. Here is that LSRL. Um, and standard deviation formulas that we would need. Again, this reference is back to older chapters. Uh, da, 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 standard error of the slope, again, refers back to older chapters. And then here is that Z statistic, again, referencing back to older chapters. So if we want to replace the standard deviation of the sampling distribution with its standard error, we can use our T statistic, where we take the uh, B minus beta all over the standard error of B, and we get a T distribution with N minus two degrees of freedom. So uh, we can use a T distribution for this information as well as what those are kind of telling you. And so you can begin to construct your confidence interval. So all of these slides have just been a lot of recap, reset, and um, review from older chapters. Here's that T interval, a lot of formulas that you would need to snip or write down or recognize. Ah, here we go, finally, performing the significance test for the slope. So this is where it's actually applicable. You would do your test statistic of your statistic minus parameter over your standard deviation. We know that, we've done that a million times. Because we're using T, we're gonna do N minus two for our degrees of freedom. Here is what our um, tails would look like, a right tail, a left tail, and a double-sided tail. 
And that's all we've got. Oh, I must have taken out the example because we are pulling up on time. So I, I am coming up to that 10 minutes. Okie dokie. Well, that's all the time we've got. Um, again, it's just a review or a recap or just kind of a general understanding about linear regression. Don't stress too much about this topic. Just use it as a review. See y'all online.